Good evening everybody! Today we're going to take a look at some unbelievably cool stories about Guitar Hero Buckethead. So, let's begin. Woo! First up, the story of an 18-inch limited edition Texas Chainsaw Leatherface doll. In a 2000 interview with Mike Keneally, Buckethead stated that the hard-to-find doll was at the top of his wish list for Christmas. On Christmas Day 1999, he was invited to the home of Guns N' Roses singer Axl Rose, whom he had never met but who wanted Buckethead to join the band. When Buckethead arrived, Axel presented him with a wrapped up box. According to Buckethead, the Michael Myers version of the doll had been out for a while, knew it was the same box, figured it was Michael Myers and opened it up. And there was Leatherface. In my head, I joined the band that second. Yep, Buckethead signed the biggest contract of his career because Axel Rose bought him a real Leatherface doll. Excellent. And speaking of the Guns N' Roses contract, here's story number two. He signed his contract with Axel at Disneyland. I think Axel went to Disneyland and, me, and, they, and they signed on the Haunted Mansion. I think as he was on the ride, he signed the contract. <laughs> and although you could probably throw away this story as being made up for fun, knowing what we know about Buckethead, it's probably true. In fact, in a December 2008 forum post, Axel Rose himself said, I'm pro Disney, go about once a year, went with Buckethead a lot. So, Buckethead probably did sign his contract at the Haunted Mansion. Classic. Next up, the story of how Buckethead met longtime friend, producer and collaborator Travis Dickerson. I can't never stop working hard. Buckethead spoke about meeting Travis in a March 2003 interview with Riffage Magazine, stating, In the mid-90s, there was a wax museum in San Francisco called the Medieval Dungeon. At one point, I was in there with an audio recorder and someone asked me what I was doing. I said I was recording the sounds of the dungeon. He told me that he had a recording studio in Southern California and we became friends. That was Travis Dickerson. Buckethead and Travis have remained friends to this day, working together on numerous projects and albums including Cobra Strike, Population Override, Thanatopsis and most recently Godzilla Sleeps Alone. And it was all because of a chance meeting at the Medieval Dungeon. So Buckethead. Next up, in the same interview with Riffage Magazine, Buckethead spoke about his KFC Bucket Graveyard. When Buckethead was asked whether he'd ever been approached by KFC, he said that he hadn't and if there was any problem with copyright, he would simply cover up the KFC logo on the bucket. The interviewer then said, or oh, you could just get a new bucket. Buckethead replied, I've got a bunch of buckets from all these chicken places, but I just like the KFC stripes. I made a Buckethead graveyard one time and got about 40 buckets and kept them. Now I'm glad I did because they don't make them anymore. Yep, as bucket collectors out there will tell you, the vintage KFC buckets are now super rare. But thankfully Buckethead has a KFC bucket graveyard. Awesome. Next up, a brutal music video that was just meant to be. Buckethead's 2004 music video, The Spokes for the Wheel of Torment, is arguably his best, and the origins of the video are just as cool. Speaking in 2009, director Sid Garon had this to say about the video. Buckethead had someone send me some MP3s of his new album without any comment or album art. I'm struck by the song The Spokes for the Wheel of Torment and instantly visualize Hieronymus Bosch paintings in my head. I scan a few paintings and make a 15 second test. A week or so later, I drive to Buckethead's secret headquarters and play in the test. He freaks out and takes me to his recording area. Right there on the wall is a huge Hieronymus Bosch poster. Buckethead had been imagining the painting coming to life when he wrote the song. It felt like it was meant to be. Yep, call it a coincidence, but as you longtime Buckethead fans know, nobody paints a better picture with music than Buckethead. 
and spokes for the Wheel of Torment is the proof. Next up, the classic story of how Buckethead dealt with the undercover cops and lawyers hired by Guns N' Roses. Well, well, well. You couldn't get a hold of him for like a month. We're going on tour. Is he coming? I don't know if he's going to show up. They actually like had people like undercover cops like checking him out at one time. He called me and he's all, Brain, there's a, there's a car out front. It's been there for like three days. And, and I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. And this was before we were supposed to go on a major... Guns N' Roses tour. And so he was paranoid and scared. So he said, I'm going to go out there with a mask. And he had a hatchet. <laughs> so he said he went out there with a mask and a hatchet and just stood next to the car. They were just looking at him and they just took off. So I think he was being followed. In Guns, the greatest thing was, you know, he would do the, the puppet thing and what wore out the managers were that <laughs> there's millions of dollars on the line and they're talking to a fucking puppet. Oh man, I mean the letters that he he would get from the lawyers because the, he would just wear them out so much. You're never going to work again. You'll be working at a gas station before you ever will pick up a guitar again. They would try to call him and it would just get Looney Tunes would come on his ass machine. And, you know, there's, mil there's a huge tour coming on and it would just be like... <laughs> Next up, the kindness of a bucket bot. So, as some of you may have recently seen, we posted a fans talk about Buckethead video series. In one of the videos, when asked what piece of Buckethead merch would you like to own, here's what one of the bucket box had to say. If I could choose any of his merchandise, it would be a painting. I love his paintings. Well, one of the good bots out there reached out to us and offered to give their Buckethead painting to Patricia. We put them in touch and a few days later Patricia had her very own Buckethead painting. So to that bucket pot who wishes to remain anonymous, thank you. Next up, let Buckethead be Buckethead. In the early 1990s, Buckethead signed a contract with record company giant Sony. But shortly after the dispute between the two began. Among other things, Sony apparently wanted to turn Buckethead into some kind of hokey Frankenstein character, and then have him do a cover of the 1970s Edgar Winter song, Frankenstein, which Buckethead refused to do. And they were trying to get him to like do Frank, a new school Frankenstein or something. He was going to play with the guitar. And he, you know, Bucket likes to do his own thing. Sony then chose to release his giant robot album in Japan only, essentially burying the album. In return, Buckethead chose to release the Dreamatorium album under the alias Death Cube K to avoid being sued by Sony. Buckethead later agreed to fulfill his contract obligation to Sony by appearing on the Last Action Hero soundtrack before parting ways with the company which, according to his former website, made him happily liberated. The moral of the story, let Buckethead be Buckethead. Don't ever try to change him. I think Ozzy in the end wants Buckethead to take off the mask and all this stuff, and he's just like, this is who I am, don't you get it, you know, kind of thing. Which is kind of surprising, because you think Ozzy would have been, like, really into that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what threw me, because I was like, wait, what? I would expect him to want this, you know? Yeah. And I think he said that Sharon was, you know, just kind of a lot to deal with also, you know, because he runs the whole show. And I can imagine, yeah. That's not a hard one to figure out. Yeah. 